Hey everyone, this is Steve Wise with 3Cloud. I wanted to take an opportunity to go a little bit deeper into how I accommodated daylight saving time changes in one of my previous files. And since I created this file, we actually went through moving from daylight saving time into standard time. And you can see the formulas I was using have adapted and are now showing the correct time. But let's take a look specifically at how I did this and how do I know that it's correct. And so we're going to jump over into Power Query. And first things first, there's probably a ton of ways to do this. This is just the way that I did this in this file. Certainly, this is not the only way, and you should find a way to do it that accommodates the methods that you need to do. But basically, what I did was first to identify when is the start date and end date of daylight saving time. And in the US, this is the second Sunday of March and the first Sunday of November. So I have them here and I've added a time to it. So this is a date time of the start and the end. And this is the outcome. So how do we do this formulaically? Like you, of course, could just look these up and make a list of them for the next 10 years. But what I did was use date time local now and date dot year to pull the year out of whatever year we're in. Create just a small temporary calendar table using that year that's going to start from March and end at the end of November. And I'll create a list of those dates and I'll convert that list into the actual dates. And so I have a little calendar table here and I'm going to add the month number and the day of the week. And I'm only interested in Sundays in March and November. So I'm going to filter this table to show me only Sundays, right? Day of week zero in March and November. Now I need to know the second Sunday in March and the first Sunday in November. So to do that, I'm going to group these by their month number and then add an index column, right? So if I click on one of these, I can see that I have a Sunday index, which is counting in order. This is the first Sunday. This is the second Sunday. This is the third Sunday. So if I remove the other columns and just keep that one with the index and expand it here, I have all the pieces I need. So I'm going to add a little helper column that's going to combine these two together and I just filter this helper column for the second Sunday in March and the first Sunday in November. So here we go. And so here's my dates. Here's I have everything I need. So I'm going to add time to this. I'm just going to put a time component in, combine it with the date and now I have a date time. Now importantly, when we do comparisons in Power Query between dates or date times or date time zones, you want to be consistent with your format. So if I'm going to compare date time zones, I need to put my date times into a date time zone. And I also want to make sure that the time zone is the same. So I'm going to use a consistent switch here. I'm going to add a time zone to my start date and my end date. And what I've done is I have two queries here where I'm basically going to reference this list. I'm going to take the end date, right? The min is the start time and the end time is the max. So these formulas are basically coming in here and getting the min of that date time. And like I said, we have to add a time zone component to this. So I'm going to add a time zone and I'm going to make that time zone negative four. Same thing with the end time. Uh, we're going to add a time zone, make it negative four. And the reason I did that is because with this earlier example where we take the the local now time and we switch it into minus four, which was Eastern time during daylight saving. This is set to make minus four. So I want to make sure I'm consistent about my start time and end time. And really the logic here is an if then statement. So if this switch time zone, which has been set to minus four is greater than the start time and less than the end time, then we're in daylight saving. So then this time is correct. If it's not in between those two dates, then we're not in daylight savings and we need to subtract an hour from it because now we're going to fall back. We're going to be five hours behind instead of four. And so I can see just by the outcome of this, and if I refresh it again, it should match exactly what's on my computer, that this is correct. This is actually what the time would have been back in the summer. This is the correct time now. So it's working, but how do I know it's working to the exact second? Do I wait until it comes around and just hope that it's going to work? No, what I've done is I'm just going to duplicate these three queries and I'm going to create a testing query. And basically what I'm doing is arbitrarily setting the start time to be a specific like today at let's say 8 o'clock a.m. The end time is going to be today at 1040 a.m. Perfect. So when I look at this example now, if my start time is 8, then I'm inside of daylight saving. 
right? So now it's working. These two are matching because it thinks I'm in daylight saving. If I take my start time and I bump it out, let's say I bump it to 9 a.m., right? It's 8.18, so I'm going to move this to 9 a.m. today. Then I'm not in daylight savings. I'm approaching that moment when I should be. So if I come back here, I should find that this has now changed to be an hour behind this. And now this is correct. So to the point where I can see that this is working exactly within an hour, we are coming up. So how do I know it's working perfectly is because I've done this testing. And the key to making this working is understanding that since switch time zone is my comparison point, I'm comparing everything to this. Half of the year, this time is wrong. And so to accommodate that, what I've done with my start time is to bump it forward one hour. So that's why there's this one hour plus duration added to it. To make this work, the start time needs to be one hour ahead. So as this switch time approaches it, which is wrong half the year, it needs to accommodate the fact that this is going to be ahead. And so as we approach that start time, it's actually going to work perfectly. So with a little bit of testing, I've proven this out. It's a quick look at how I've done this. Certainly not the only way, but I've hoped you enjoyed this quick peek at how I can accommodate daylight saving changes within Power Query and that you'll join me again for another video. Thank you very much.